Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I'm at New World Stages, where a Sherlock Carol is currently playing until January 1st, 2023. His name is Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. Dr. Timothy Cratchit. The Countess of Morcom. Mildred Delva, loyal to Mr. Scrooge for 35 years. The New York Times critics pick a Sherlock Carol Written and directed by Mark Shanahan with restaging by Jan Waldman, stars Broadway favorite Drew McVitty as the titular sleuth, with Adelco nominee Alan Gilmore joining the company as Scrooge. The cast also features Joanna Carpenter, Dan Dominguez, Isabel Keating, Mark Price, with understudies Joe Delafield, Alexandra Kopko, and Byron Sandseer. Three Christmases since the Reichenbaum Falls, Sherlock Holmes has little appetite for mince pies or for solving crime. Wandering through Victorian London, he meets a grown-up and not-so-tiny Tim Cratchit, who implores him to investigate the mysterious death of his reformed benefactor, one Ebenezer Scrooge. An impossible murder? a threatening letter, and a missing diamond, it's just enough to intrigue the great detective. But it's a dark and treacherous Christmas Eve, and once again the night is haunted by the spirits of the past, present, and future. Using his powers of deduction, can Holmes overcome his own ghost to crack the case? The worlds of Dickens and Doyle combine in this instant holiday classic, and I got to sit down with two of the stars, Drew McVitie and Alan Gilmore. I really enjoyed A Sherlock Carol when I saw it last year, and I was so excited to know that it was coming back, you know, when it's like immediately announced. Um, what is it like for you to reprise the role of Sherlock? Ah, well, it's a joy to reprise it. Um, a lot of the work last year was, it's an enormous amount of text, so a lot of the work last year was, do I know all the text? Right. And this year it's had a year to percolate and a year to bubble, and from first day of rehearsal I was like, oh, it's all in here. So it's much more experiential this year than mm -hmm. it is uh, demonstrative last year. Okay, okay. Well, how long did it take in terms of developing developing it from page to stage? Ah, well, I was privileged to be around for the very first dressing room conversation of this piece. Mark Shanahan and I were doing um, uh, The Weird together at the, in Nantucket on the White Heron Theater. Mm -hmm. And we had 10 minutes before the curtain call every night where we could uh, sit in the dressing room and have a, a shot before we did our curtain call. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, I, I have a, a vision for this play and I hear your voice doing it. And he described a wow. Sherlock Carol and I said, write that play. And over the next two months, installments came in my email of what turned out to be really a perfect play. Uh, from the first draft, we didn't have to reconstruct it. It's genius in its construction. And as far as I know, I'm the only one to have played Sherlock up until this point um, in the United States of America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So what can fans of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Charles Dickens expect? Right? Ah, they can expect a brilliant melding of those two worlds that also seems to magically create its own Shanahan world as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, Easter eggs throughout of the characters and situations of the Doyle and the Dickens world. And I have yet to hear any fan of either genre have any complaints about the respect or the the inside jokiness of, of right. the uh, text. I love the chemistry between you and Alan. As and do I. I. <laughs> and I know that you actually have a history. A deep history. I think we go back, it gets fuzzy because it's so long ago, but we did do the acting company tour together in 1992, 91, mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm. But we'd also already had done downtown theater prior to that right. here in New York. Uh, a couple of Moliere pieces and uh, some pieces by some friends of ours. Uh, so I don't remember a time without Alan Gilmore in my life, and it was I've always had him in mind for Scrooge, and it was so glad we were able oh, to get him. Oh, that's so year. wonderful! Yeah. How exciting yeah. to be able to work together again yeah. like this in this yeah. time. Yeah, we're a couple of old men of the theater now, so it's really nice <laughs> to uh, to have him there. So um, I may be going to London. Ah, 
And I understand something else is going on in London that I might just have to see. I think you have to see it, especially being as you're a fan of the show already. Yeah, we have our sister production in London, which opened to terrific reviews just uh, on Thanksgiving Day. And it will be running until the second week of January, a week mm -hmm. longer than us. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're very thrilled about making it a perennial production as well. And uh, Mark was able to direct both, which was a feat uh, uh, that uh, as producers we had a, a challenge pulling off, but we did. And uh, Mark will be back in New York for our opening. How many times have you been in a Christmas carol? Right. Um, I, I think nine times. Oh. Uh, so uh, my first, no, 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 I, maybe like 10. Because my very first Christmas carol, and you know, you, you're not a professional actor, you know, you, they need to do something with your union card if you have not been in a Christmas carol. Every <laughs> pro has to have done After at least one, yes. <laughs> like that, So that's like, a Christmas Carol, Law and Order, it's that kind of thing. Okay. Right? okay. Okay. Yeah, rite of passage. So my first one was, oh my gosh, Leah, probably in like 92 or something at Jiva. Oh, okay. And that was so much fun. I was Christmas past. Okay. And tumbled out of a, um, out of a, a, wardrobe cabinet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was very flexible. <laughs> um, and uh, then my next one was at uh, Goodman in mm -hmm. 2005, where I played a variety of wonderful people, including Mr. Topper. And, you know, it, it was just so much fun. And then I played Scrooge at Goodman in Chicago starting in 2014. Okay. And all the way up to 2021. Okay. So now you're in New York. Yeah in a Sherlock Carol, mm -hmm. playing Scrooge with your friend, Drew mm -hmm. McVetty, playing mm -hmm. Sherlock. Mm -hmm. um, what is it like for you to switch it up, having played Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, traditionally, and now sort of turns it on its head in yeah. this play? It blows my mind. It blows my, I had so many meta moments just in rehearsal where I'm like, you know, I am now in the position of talking to the Yourself. myself. <laughs> you know, Scrooge against Scrooge. <laughs> Scrooge against Scrooge, or or Scrooge for Scrooge. Right. Right. Sort of, you know, saying words that, in some instances, Scrooge has said, mm -hmm. and also giving this sort of loving advice that these other spirits, angels, have given to Scrooge on his journey of reclamation right. and, and, and forgiveness, you know, back to the, the wonderful child that he was. You know, right. there's that kernel of goodness, real goodness in Ebenezer Scrooge from his childhood. It's the journey that, and, and his trying to adapt and, it's try, and his trying to protect himself and, and defend himself from all of the hurts of life that have led him to that lonely, cold, hard place. But the kernel inside is a good one. And it's, it's been very interesting to be in the position of now I am the joy. I'm the, I, yeah, I'm the joy. You are I'm the, the joy. Yeah. The moment Scrooge, I'm not going to give anything away. Yeah. The moment Scrooge appeared. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. I, 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 I love that. I love that. You know, I really can. There's a big, I don't think we're giving too much away to say a, to say that I, I have a big sort of a laughter moment mm. and I'm really laughing. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a great moment. It's a beautiful moment. And it's just the joy of being on stage as Scrooge once yeah. again, on stage with this wonderful cast, on stage and with cast, my dear friend. And a Drew. cast that reflects the world in which we we live in. Thank you. Love that. Yep. Thank you, producers. Love that. Yes. And um, the dizzying array of characters that they play, and they're all such gifted comedians. Yes. I was in stitches, and yeah. I've seen the play. Classical Theater Parlum's Twelfth Night, yes. directed by Carl, Carl Cofield. Yeah. A brilliant Afrofuturistic production yes. that I got to spend some time with you guys this summer. 
but the play is nominated for eight Adelcos. Yeah. You have a best featured actor in a play Adelco nomination. Yes. Um, and Kara's nominated. Kara's nominated. Best, act, best and, lead actress. And Jelani. Jelani. Best lead actor. Carl's nominated. Carl. Best revival. Yeah. And and now you get to bring it back. Yeah. In February. Yes. Skirball. Yeah. What does that? Are you are you looking forward to so much. doing it again? Oh my God, so much. You know the the show is beautiful. Yeah, it's I gorgeous. Think, I think it gives people that are not necessarily Shakespeare types, it gives them a real sort of a welcome into Shakespeare. I you think know, a lot of people and, are going to start seeing more Shakespeare, wanting to read it and, yeah. and wanting to play it, yeah. even more so. Yeah, right? even yeah. More so. But, you know, and Carl wanted us, let us, wanted us to bring ourselves to it mm. really it's not like you know that traditional thing yes. in the past yes. you know uh, Leah where you had to sort of make sure that you spoke a certain way for you know the kind of Shakespeare yeah. that your grandfather was accustomed to right. it wasn't that it was people we wanted to bring it was as you, as you said Afro futuristic so Carl was like let's put the diaspora out there let's put the, the, the dance Oh yes, the dancing! Oh my God! And she's nominated as well. Yes, she uh, is. Yes, Tiffany, you yeah. play Malvolio in the Classical Theater of Harlem's Twelfth Night, and you have a little something else to share about Malvolio that you worked on this summer. Oh wow! Well, um, a wonderful writer named Betty Shamia has written a new play called Malvolio, and uh, the Classical Theater of Harlem will be producing that play this summer. I feel pretty sure. And I haven't gotten, you know, exactly the call yet. I'm mm -hmm. going. I'm going to be working on the play, you know, in its um, sort of workshop stages uh, leading up to this summer. And I'm knocking wood that uh, I will be uh, on stage once again this summer as Mal. I call him Mal. Yay! He's a buddy. <laughs> well, thank you. That's all the time we have because you have to do a show. I've got a show. So, thank you. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Until next time. Backstage Pass with Leah Chang airs on Sunday at 6.30 on Fios 34, RCN 83, and Spectrum 56 slash 1996. If you missed the show, you can watch it on my YouTube channel.